Hello, welcome to the third of a series of tutorials for PRISMS PF, an open source phase field modeling framework developed at the PRISM Center of the University of Michigan. In this video, I will show you how to install the prerequisites needed to successfully compile and run PRISMS PF and visualize the results. To compile and run PRISMS PF, the main prerequisite you will need is the DL2 finite element library on which PRISMS PF is based. This library must be set with the pforest and MPI dependencies. pforest is a library which allows for distributing very large messages across multiple processors. And MPI provides a communication functionality between a set of processes for parallel computing. Additionally, you will need CMake, which is a family of tools used to control the software compilation process. For results visualization and analysis, you will need an application for interactive scientific visualization. Two of the most common ones are Visit and Paraview. You can choose between any of these two applications to visualize the results from a PRISMS PF simulation, or you can use both. However, choosing Visit will allow you to use the post-processing scripts that are included in the PRISMS PF installation. Currently, we have scripts that work with a Visit CLI which you can use to count the number of domains in a system, calculate the interfacial area between two domains, and calculate the fraction of a face. And we are continuously adding new scripts to perform tasks that are useful for the analysis of phase field simulation results. Okay, let's go through a brief overview of the tasks we are going to cover on this video. Before I begin, I should mention that we will focus on the installation of prerequisites in a Mac OS platform, which is very similar to the Linux installation because they are both based on Unix-like systems. Also, in some cases, I will show the steps but not the whole installation process because some of the packages take too long to install. If you want to use Prisons PF in Windows, we recommend that you use the Docker installation, which will allow you to run everything in a container that already has all the prerequisites installed. First, we will go through the installation of CMake and MPI. Then, I will discuss the installation of DL2 and pforest through different methods. And finally, I will go through the installation of Visit and Paraview. Okay, let's get to it. Let's start with CMake. The simplest way to obtain it is via a package manager such as Homebrew or Macports. The advantage of package managers is that they allow you to install or update applications using a single command line on the terminal. So I use Homebrew, which you can get online here. And once you have Homebrew installed, all I do is open a terminal and then type brew install CMake. And the package manager will find the latest version of the package, download it and install it. This may take a while, but it'll usually work because it will also download and install all the dependencies needed. So let's skip to the end of the installation and then type CMake dash dash version. And it is finding the package and also telling me which version I have. Another option is to download the precompiled binaries and installing them, which you can do by going to this website and downloading the DMG by clicking on it and following the installation instructions, which are usually straightforward. For macOS, this will just create a new folder with the application which we can drag to the applications folder. One important thing is that once the application is installed, it needs to be on your path so that you can run it using the common light from any directory. The default installation path on macOS is this one. So we type export path, then the path. And one way to make sure this path is always included is to add this line in the bash profile, which is the dot profile file in your home directory. So let's open this file and copy paste this line. Finally, you can just download the tar file, which is this one, and then uncompress it and build it using the instructions on the readme file. Okay, let's move on to MPI. For this, there are different options for libraries you can use. The one I use is OpenMPI. 
And once again, the simplest way to install it is using a package manager. So if we use Homebrew, we just type brew install open MPI. And to check that we have it, we can type MPI run dash dash version. In fact, before installing anything, it is worth doing this to check if it is already installed in your computer. Also, many computer clusters may already have the CMake and MPI libraries installed, and you can just load them as modules. For example, in this terminal, I am logged into the TACC Stampy2 cluster. And you can see the modules that are already loaded by typing module list. And if a module you need does not appear on the list, you can type module avail, and then module load, and the module name. Finally, if you need to, you can also download the tar file and follow some simple installation instructions. I'm not going to go through this right now, but you can follow the step-by-step -step installation guide on the website. I will also share this link in the description of the video. Now that we have CMake and MPI installed, we can move on to DL2. First of all, I just want to mention that you can find all the details and options for the installation of DL2 on this website. The most straightforward option with DL2 is to install the binary package, which will already include the dependencies. In this video, I am only going to show the installation for Mac OS, but there are binary packages available for different Linux distributions as well. For that, we will go to the DL2 website, then go to download and get the latest release. Once I have downloaded it, I will click on it to install it. Once it is installed, we need to define an environment variable with the installation path so that Prisms PF can find the DL2 library. So on Mac OS, this path will be the following. I'm going to type echo deal underscore two underscore dear. And since I have already set it up, it is showing me a path. If you do not have it set up, then the path will appear empty. So the way to declare it is export deal to dear equals this path. But we want to make sure this environment variable is set each time we open a terminal. So what we can do instead of typing it every time is added it to the dot profile file in your home directory like this. Now, another option is the installation from source, which will take the longest, but it is the most customizable. You can take this approach to install deal two on Mac OS or Linux. Let's start with pforest. I'm going to install both pforest and deal two on my home directory within a new directory called SRC. So I am going to open a terminal, go to my home directory, create a directory called SRC, go there, and then create two directories. One in which I'm going to download and unpack the tarball, and another one where I'm going to install pforest. So we type mkdir pforest files, mkdir pforest install. Then we go to pforest files and download the tarball using wget. At this moment, 2.2 is the latest version, but you should always make sure you are downloading the latest pforest version. You can check that on the pforest website. In addition, we are going to download a setup script created by DL2 specifically for the installation of pforest. Again, we use wget and then we type this URL. Now the next step is to run the script, but first we have to make sure it's executable. We can do this by changing the permissions. And then we run it and set a target directory for the installation, which in case will be pforest install. Let's do this. This will execute the script and we'll do all the installation steps for pforest. Once this is installed without errors, we need to set an environment variable to tell deal2 where pforest is located. We do this by typing export pforest underscore dear 
and then home src pforest install. Now we are done with pforest and are ready to move on to deal 2 Let's go back to src and then again create two directories. They will be called deal 2 files and deal 2 install. We go to deal 2 files then download the tar file for deal2. Again, you should make sure that it is the latest version on the deal2 website. Now let's extract the tar using this. And this will create a new directory called deal2 9.2.0 to put all the extracted files. Now let's create a new directory called deal2-build and then go to the directory, which is where we are going to build deal2. Then we are going to do a CMake here to create the make file. This CMake line has to contain all the dependencies that we want deal2 to have. So as you can see, we have to put deal2 with MPI equals on, and deal2 with pforest equals on, then a backslash to continue it on the next line and add the option of the directory where we are going to install, which is cmake install prefix equals the installation directory. And the last thing to input in this line is the path of the location of the cmake lists file, which is on the directory where the tar file was extracted. And once this is done, a makefile will be created in the current directory. Now to complete the installation, all we need to do is make install. This may take a while, even hours, depending on the speed of your processors. If you have multiple processors, you can speed it up by including the dash J option and the number of processors you want to use. So let's try make dash J for install. Once this is done, if we have no errors, you can do a make test, and this will check that the installation was successful. And that's it. We have installed deal2. One more thing we need to do is make sure the environment variables with the path of deal2 and pforest are known. So again, we can go to dot profile and add the lines. Export deal2 deer equals the deal2 path and export pforest deer equals the pforest path. Finally, once you've tested deal2, for example, by running one of their built-in applications or prisons pf, you can actually delete the build folders if you want. Let's go again to home slash src, and then they are. You can delete this folder and this folder. Before I move on, I want to mention two more options to install deal2, although I'm not going to go over them. One is to use a Dockerest installation, and the other one is to use source-based installers like Candy or SPAC. And the information and links on how to do that are in this page, which is the deal2 downloads page. I should mention that there is also an option to install Prisons PF as a Docker image, and that image already includes deal2. I will not do this in the video, but it is relatively straightforward to do so. Just make sure you follow the instructions on this page. Okay, at this point we have installed everything that Prisons PF needs to work. However, we still need a package to visualize the results. So I'm going to show you how to install Visit and Paraview. Let's start with Visit. We go to the Visit website, then click on the Downloads tab, then executables, and then you simply select the file you need based on your platform and version. I'm on the Mac OS version 10.13.6, so the latest version I can get is 3.1.1. Once it is installed, I can just open it, load the file or file series that I want from Prisms BF, and plot it. The same thing with Paraview. 
we go to the website, then downloads, and you can choose the version you want to install. Once installed, you can do the same as with visit, open some files, and plot them. So with that, we conclude this tutorial. As always, don't forget that in the description of the video, we posted a link to the user's manual, the GitHub repository, and also a link to register for the user's forum, where you can submit your questions about the use of Prism's PF. Thank you for watching.